welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so glad that you've joined us for yet another one of these teachings with my dear friend, Dr. Ginger Asel on the book of Revelation. And we have been delving into some difficult and interesting uh, topics. And so this chapter is filled with even more of those things as we move into the next trumpets. And so before we begin, I'd like to just open us in a word of prayer and then we'll move forward. Heavenly Father, God, Holy One and Righteous One, we just come before you right now and submit this teaching into your hands. God, have your way. And I pray, Lord, a special anointing and, an, and a supernatural energy to just pour upon my friend as she shares these words right now, God, because they truly are the words of life. And so we thank you, God, for it in advance. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. As we're looking at chapter 9, we're going to continue the trumpets. Now, we want to remind you that last session, we compared the two altars, the altar in chapter 6 and the altar in chapter 8. And we concluded that they were the same altar. And in chapter 6, martyrs were praying for the Lord to avenge their blood, to remember their martyrdom. And the answer to that prayer came in chapter 8. We have to remember, it's very important that we remember, the trumpets are a direct answer mm -hmm. to the prayers of all martyrs of all ages particularly those that have, are in the tribulation period, but all martyrs. And when the angel took that censer filled with the prayers, it said he flung it to the earth. Mm -hmm. And when he flung it to the earth, then the seven angels with the seven trumpets began to sound. And we heard about the first four last time. And we compared them with plagues that had come upon the Egyptians while the Israelites and Goshen had been protected. The first one was like hail mixed with fire. And there was the plague of hail. Then there was a mountain-like Thing that dropped from the heaven into the ocean and sea, and it was one third was turned to blood. Yeah. And that was the very first of the plagues in, in Egypt. Egypt. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, another flying object, a star coming down and touching the streams and rivers, and a third of them were turned bitter. They were wormwood. Mm -hmm. And the last was the darkening of all of the heavenly bodies, a third of them darkening. And that relates to the ninth plague, the plague of darkness. So this chapter will deal with two of the remaining trumpets. And they were introduced by the very last part of eighth chapter with an eagle crying out, whoa, whoa, whoa. So we're anticipating that mm. compared with the four that have been opened, these are going to be different, more intense, mm -hmm. very woeful. Mm -hmm. So we're ready to begin <laughs> to look, delve into these scriptures. These woes. Okay, so this is chapter nine, and I'm, I'm just going to read verse one first. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to earth, and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. Now, in front of you, you have a the oddest uh, picture of this star falling down. And this, this star is representative of an angel. Now, many times, not always, but many times when stars are used in, in Revelation particularly, they're going to represent 
angels. We remember in the first chapter that when Jesus uh, was uh, reappearing, that in his right hand he had seven and stars. stars. Mm -hmm. And they were the seven, depending on your translation, it was either the seven messengers or the seven angels of the seven, seven churches. churches. Yeah. So this is going to be identified as someone, a star, an angel. We can assume that that star is going to be Lucifer, and we will find out that indeed it is. But he has the key to the bottomless pit. So we're going to be looking in this chapter through the opening up of that a an abyss a, a a container that that is going to release and we will see what is going to be released <laughs> as we read on okay so i'm going to continue then in verse two and i'll read through uh, verse 11. he opened the shaft of the bottomless pit and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft then from the smoke came locusts on the earth, and they were given power like the power of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any green plant or any tree, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were allowed to torment them for five months, but not to kill them. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it, was, when it stings someone. And in those days, people will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. In appearance, the locusts were like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were what looked like crowns of gold. Their faces were like human faces, their hair like women's hair, and their teeth like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the noise of their wings was like the noise of many chariots with horses rushing into battle. They, I'm sorry, they have tails and stings like scorpions and their power to hurt people for five months is in their tails. They have as king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon and in Greek, he is called Apollyon. We have an artist rendering before you. And remember that as we were reading this through, John was describing it like, like, like a whole series of similes because it was so strange. And so whether this artist has done this vision justice, we don't know right. because it, it's difficult for John to explain and it's more difficult for us to even visualize or interpret but it, it, what we do have here is like a tail, like a scorpion. Mm -hmm. um, but whatever these creatures are, it, it was an army. It was like an army of hell. It was mm -hmm. really releasing uh, the powers of the evil one. And Apollyon was Satan. It was mm -hmm. Lucifer. He is the captain, so to speak, of this host that is being released. But what we need to look at is just like when Satan went before the Lord concerning Job, God said, you can go this far with Job and no further. These are the limitations. And it's the same way here. There was a limitation on time, just five months. There was a limitation on what they could do. They could afflict him just like when when Job you can you can afflict his body but you cannot take his life mm -hmm. so the same limitation was there but also it was only on the individuals who were not sealed by God so it's like Egypt again mm -hmm. that God is protecting those that are his. So this is on those that have rejected the Lord and we're, we're protecting mm -hmm. uh, those that are sealed. Now remember, those that are sealed can be taken two ways. It can either be taken literally, that that was 
pertaining to Israel or that it was symbolic. So that is your choice and your further investigation to make that decision. So do you, when you talk about uh, those that are sealed, do you think the seal refers to the Holy Spirit as a seal, as we uh, read in some of the other scriptures, or uh, is it the blood of Christ that is our seal, coming under the blood of Christ? That's if you very, draw the analogy with mm -hmm. Egypt and the, the blood on the doorpost, I was right. wondering what you thought that, about that. That is a very, very good question, because um, I, I did some research on the word seal uh, and mark, and sign. Um, so it is the same uh, uh, Greek word that is related to being sealed with the Holy Spirit. So I think it would definitely, well, here's, here's another question. It's okay. another question, okay. All right, we're just discussing this and we're putting out possibilities. Mm -hmm. Because if you, it depends if you're going to take it literally or, um, Symbolically, yeah, because if it is um, symbolically, you you could say the blood mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit. But if you're going to be taking it with Israel at this point in time, mm -hmm. you would have to probably limit it. And I'll clarify that, especially when we get to <laughs> to chapter twelve. Okay. Okay. That you would have to say that it would be only with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. All right. So that's good. So you guys can research that and continue on with our teachings as well. Uh, I'll continue reading in verses 12 to 21 now as we move on. Then the sixth angel blew his trumpet, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the, the hour, the day, the month, and the year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of mounted troops was twice 10,000 times 10,000. I heard their number, and this is how I saw the horses in my vision and those who rode them. They wore breastplates the color of fire and of sapphire and of sulfur. And the heads of the horses were like lions' heads, and fire and smoke and sulfur came out of their mouths. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and smoke and sulfur coming out of their mouths. For the power of the horses is in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails are like serpents with heads, and by means of them they wound. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues, did not repent of the works of their hands, nor give up worshiping demons and idols of gold and silver and bronze and stone and wood, which cannot see or hear or walk, nor did they repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. Several points to unpack here. We want to uh, note that in the very first verse that was read in this segment was verse 13. And as this sixth trumpet was sounding, there was a voice that came from the four horns of the golden altar before the Lord. And this is connected again to the prayers of the martyrs. So we're seeing again as this sixth trumpet is sounding that what is going to happen is corresponding to the answer to the prayer of the martyrs. Mm -hmm. How long, how long before you avenge our blood? So we're, we're seeing here uh, that by the river Euphrates, we're going to be having 200 million troops coming across the, the from from the east now the description is very similar to what we've already read so very, that has to be very symbolic uh, that what john was seeing was an army like he never saw because remember military 
actions and battles back in those days were done with spears and swords and armor. They, they had on the armor and they would march forward. So many people have looked at the descriptions that were given in this chapter and have likened it to that equipment that we have presently in our military. Mm -hmm. And that could very well be the way John is, is saying, uh, this is how I'm trying to explain it, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know what else to do. And so it's all in similes in their comparison. Now, I do want us to look at this composite that the artist did that shows a summary of the trumpets be before you. We're going to first look that we're, we're going to see that we have hail. Now, you have to really look carefully at this because the hail is, is very... Uh, tiny, but as it, it hits the bottom, you can see that there's fire, so the hail was mixed with mm -hmm. fire. Then we see the, uh, the, the falling down of like a big mountain on fire that hits the sea, and that's turning one third of the sea to blood. And then we have another, like a star falling on the waters, of the um, the waters of the rivers and springs, and that is pictured there. And then we have like a covering going over the stars and the moon to bring the fourth trumpet. Now, note the little tiny eagle that is <laughs> flying there. He is saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. And he's introducing the last three of the trumpet sounds. And we do um, see that over by Debbie, we have those 200 million troops advancing towards uh, Israel. And the, right in the center, of course, of course we have Apollyon uh, standing very boldly as being in charge. Well, he's in charge, but remember the limitations. Mm -hmm. He's not really in charge. You can go this far and no further. Remember two things that are extremely important. That this was limited to those who were not sealed by God. And then it was an answer to the prayers of the martyrs. Now, the last portion of the scriptures that we read, it ends on a very sad note as yeah. far as I'm concerned, because it, it tells us that though they suffered, the individuals and, and it, tells us they did not repent. They did not repent. And you look at the list of what they did not repent of the work of their hands, worshiping demons, mm -hmm. idols of gold and silver and bronze and stones and wood that cannot hear or walk. They didn't repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immoralities or their thefts. They didn't repent. If that refrain is there, to my mind, it means to me, perhaps it does to you as well, they had the opportunity mm. to repent. They could have repented. There is a hardness of heart. And we must be very careful to be tender towards the things of God. Yeah. Lord, we close mm. in prayer. We pray an intercessory prayer for the denizens of this world. Those, O oh God, that are blinded to the truth 
that Jesus is Lord. Oh, Lord. We pray, God, that they might hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ while it is day, mm. before the night comes when no man can work. We pray for souls to turn to you right now. May they soften their hearts and receive you as their Lord and Savior, so that they might be among those that are the redeemed. Yes. We pray this in Jesus' name, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for your glory, Lord, yes, God. and for your honor. Amen.